Hey, Jarvax. This is Nandan Nampali. We've known each other for a while. I'm currently now helping a company buy our systems to get off ground. I'm Chief Commercial Officer, the company that started about two years ago. I've been there, there for about a year, and we're excited about the possibilities. So, Bio Systems, uh, it says accelerating intelligent compute. So, what's the strategy here? So, as you know, right, um, we've been associated with computing for a long time. Uh, really, it's more moved from processing, which has been the focus of the majority of uh, uh, the news, effectively. But the real problem is. Uh, data movement, right? It's really like moved the problem from computing to actually the network itself. And what Bia is trying to solve is the data movement problem that helps us accelerate intelligent compute. Is it like the bottleneck? Is the networking and like these AI systems that have potentially tens of thousands of computers that need to work together? Indeed. So if you, if you think about it, you know, 20 years ago, we started moving discrete components like CPUs and GPUs onto the same SOC. That came the base of the application processor or SOCs and custom ASICs that helped do that. And we've reached a point where now that needs to scale to the next level. And with the emergence of things like chiplets, you can actually now build a system of chiplets rather than a system on a chip. And in order to do that, what you need to do is have a better connectivity, better data movement, better network, and really the problem is about how you solve that efficiently. So it's not just a bunch of Ethernet cables and uh, networking uh, little uh, adapters on the computer or something totally different that's happening, or? Indeed, so at, you're moving more and more onto the same die, right? You're now suddenly seeing 16 cores, 32 cores, 64, uh, core configurations on one SOC, but also now you're seeing ch multiple chiplets of those put together into a bigger system. So what you're seeing is a lot of innovation on um, on die fabric, like what Bai is doing, chiplet readiness, which is also something we support, and then of course you're having uh, uh, files that go across different chiplets. You see optical connections on substrate going across to different chiplets and then between chips going to the rest of the network, so on and so forth. So there's a, a huge amount of investment and effort needed to move data more efficiently so we can actually accelerate the compute. Uh, because you can't just have like one giant SOC that has 10,000 SOCs inside. They need to talk with each other in a, in a, in a, in a uh, what you call it, the server area. So indeed, so what, what you see is there's a certain limits, physical limits that you hit and how much you can fit onto the same die. Obviously, you know the economics of uh, uh, silicon, which is the larger the die, more likely the chance of faults with it, so yield goes down. So that's actually being solved by the idea of chiplets, where you can actually build best-in-class key components of compute, etc., which work really tightly coupled together, but then you can put more of them down like Lego blocks, you can see companies like AMD have, have really succeeded with that strategy. Now the broader industry is coming towards that too. Because when I saw, for example, uh, Apple, uh, they were doing these uh, really cool chips and then they have the, the, Ma the Max, the Ultra, and it sounded just like the trick was you just add more and somehow you connect them fast yeah. and that's the way you have double the performance. Indeed, so effectively if you had a Lego block of, let's say, four core clusters, and that was a chiplet, and you said, actually, next round, I'm gonna just put two of those down, right, on the same substrate, expand my caching, I can actually have a much faster time to market with proven technology that already exists. And uh, do you show stuff on your slides to explain what you're talking about? Yeah, so this is actually a top-down view of how you would be actually building systems, right? And so what Bia does is we provide the software stack, uh, tooling that'll help you understand, analyze uh, what a system should look like. Uh, you can actually run workloads to understand what the system should look like. You can understand how, how my memory architecture needs to be. I can understand how to partition it so that when I build multiple chiplets, it's the best use of compute, what data needs to be closer is closer, 
and you move on from there. And what Baya allows you to do is to build that high-level architecture and then build on that to build micro-architectures and actual system fabric designed in a way that you can put in feedback, understand how to implement it because, as you know, processing gets in there first and the system needs to put that to it. By enabling physically aware design, you can sub substantially reduce time to market. And then, of course, we have a platform that continues beyond that, the same platform that will allow you to do post-silicon tuning as well with quality of service, with the kind of Im improving metrics and help you future-proof it. Uh, so, is it okay if I ask how does it compare with stuff with like Mellanox or some companies are are doing in the they call it network uh, systems? So Mellanox is, I mean, obviously, kind of the base behind NV Switch and NV Link, uh, but they are kind of complementary to us. They will actually take that connectivity outside the chip and connect multiple of those chiplets together. We are actually on die in that fabric. So we connect a lot of the components on the die itself. And our network is actually complementary, as I said, you are, to Mellanox. We are supporting petabyte scale compute. We're supporting very, very flexible topologies, right? which a lot of people are needing. More importantly, we have an architecture for the transport that is very unique. We can overlay different protocol transports, including custom ones, over the same transport. So we get a lot of benefits of efficiency, footprint, et cetera, which are critical for the next generation of compute. And all throughout, you are data-driven. So you're running workloads, understanding traffic, designing, feeding back, so that what you're building is going to deliver on the KPI, is going to deliver on the metrics. What we deliver out is ready, correct by construction, proven, and then you have the physical implementation that you can achieve much faster time to market. So is it like IP for the for the chip designers? Indeed. You can partner so, with them? So we do have tooling and IP that's combined together into a system that you can build and customize. And uh, we can check your, your slide just in a second, but when you talk about on the die, uh, because sometimes I'm trying to understand how these chips are designed and there's, for example, the ARM cores, and then there's the GPU, the NPU, there's so much different things in the SOC. Are you just one of those parts, potentially? So we are a part that actually connects all those things together, right? So uh, today, a number of customers, I mean, Qualcomm has its own fabric, ARM has some of the own components of fabric. What we provide is a full plethora, a complete portfolio of fabrics that can be pulled together on the same transport. Uh, does it illustrate more what you're saying here? Yes, and in particular, what's driving our interest or interest in Baya is that we're designed for the AI era, right? So we are looking at much, much wider buses uh, that are very optimally connected together. We have very efficient multicasting capabilities, posted transactions, which are fundamental to um, AI. And then, of course, both optimization and future proofing because you always know more different types of models. You need to have different types of route optimizations, etc. In fact, that brings me to a very interesting point about BIA itself. BIA is only two years old, and we just recently raised our Series B uh, funding led by Maverick Silicon and, in fact, strategic partnership with Synopsys. Uh, we, Matrix is our primary investor, Intel Capital is investor, and it all came about by uh, Jim Keller, who you know is quite a famous architect and engineer, saw there's a gap in the marketplace, and he um, pegged um, the CEO and founder of uh, NetSpeed, uh, Silesh Kumar, who is now the CEO founder of um, Bio Systems, to kind of come in and solve this because it's a real problem, especially exacerbated by the move to chiplets. So fabrics have to be rethought about how we do it. They have to be chiplet ready, and they have to deliver on much higher levels of KPI and reliability that you need for the AI era. So um, on the slide right here, it says, uh, crafted to satisfy the scale, performance and customization of modern AI silicon designs. How far is this from uh, mass production? Very good question. So we have now uh, announced two customers. There are more that we haven't announced. 
and uh, we actually are in silicon readiness with some of them uh, again we have we can't speak about actual uh, production uh, systems because until the customer decides to announce them we can't talk about it but we it's not are far. tested it's not it far it's not far we we should see bio based systems out in the uh, in the field in 26 all right what do we see here so basically if you think about chiplet readiness uh, there are two or three things that you have to do one the network has to be rethought it has to be chiplet ready so how do you do congestion isolation namespace isolation all the things that you need second is the understanding of chiplet ready coherency where it's not the same if you have a uniform memory architecture across different processors and different chiplets it becomes quite non-uniform in its uh, uh, performance and latency levels so you need to be able to design a system that understands those units and finally you need somebody a uh, tooling exploration that can help you design for multi chiplets multiple chiplet boundaries and so we provide all those components uh, because AI is crazy uh, mm -hmm. there, it sounds like a, a gold rush and everybody wants to get the next trillion dollar opportunity mm -hmm. and stuff like that uh, uh, there's so much potential for different designs now, right? Mm -hmm. And it needs to be done in the right way to not waste money, right? But to yes. be optimal performance yes. and maybe not uh, spend too much on each chip, but maybe connect them together to save money. Does that make sense? So it is. So if you think about the benefits of chiplets, those are m multiple, right? So firstly, instead of building a large SOC, you build key components that are best in class, right? and you can actually then scale them by actually having multiple versions of those or multiple instances of those. Alongside that, you need to be able to get in uh, auxiliary or complementary capabilities that may be best in class from somebody else. How do I put those together? Right. Uh, the third thing that it really helps is instead of having a giant, you know, 5,000 square millimeter, which is impossible at this point anyway, SOC, you actually can build it in, in, in blocks, you improve yield. Uh, and then of course, because of all of that modularity, you can actually create specialized or customized systems that target different market places. And we did some videos together when you were doing uh, uh, the ARM uh, uh, designs. Uh, is this totally compatible with any ARM solutions in the future? What are the architectures you're working with? So. The good news for Baya is that we are actually CPU or GPU architecture agnostic, right? So we are uh, uh, we go by the protocols that those processors use to talk to the rest of the system. So we're compliant with AMBA uh, AXI. We're compliant with AMBA AMBA CHI for coherency. We are actually you have your own protocols that you can set up with it. Uh, this actually talks about our next big product that we announced last week, which is Neuroscale, which is helping build crossbar replacements effectively in a much more compact, efficient fashion. And if you look at where the, the thing's going from an uh, AI perspective, you know what NVLink and NV Switch showed with NVIDIA is to scale up the performance, you need a much more capable switching technology that pulls together closed accelerators. And what this allows is other partners to do the same thing. You're seeing standards like UA Link, UEC, or Ultra Ethernet come in. We're actually enabling even smaller companies to build very effective switching technologies that can scale up or scale out. And when I look at the slide, it says 32 terabytes per second. Sounds like a lot. It is, and finally, as we start, come back to the, the topic we started off first, it's really about data movement, right? The, the bottleneck is in the network. We're trying to help solve it. It has to be solved on die. It has to be solved across die. And then, of course, through the rack, beyond. And uh, there's so much development happening in this field. It's going very fast. You're talking mm -hmm. about the startup is just two years. Yes. And uh, do you know exactly where it's going? Or does different depends on the partnerships, what could happen? So, uh, so one thing is clear, right? So there is a very strong need for AI fabric and coherent fabric. So that's, that's kind of the foundation of the startup, uh, and that's gonna be there. 
The second piece is the software and the tooling that allows you to understand what kind of workloads are you developing, how can you build systems for it, and that itself, performance modeling and scaling, is a really important piece. So we know those are the two foundational pillars for it. Beyond that, there's a lot of opportunity emerging. Can we actually help uh, the market understand uh, interplay of triplets? Can it be a marketplace? Can it be a platform to understand mix and match? Is it actually focused on improving network triplets? But there is a huge uh, possibility for what we can do uh, both by ourselves and in partnership with uh, key players in the industry. And there are some very high talents in your company, some colleagues that are, uh, and are you growing? Are you looking for other talents to, what, what, do you, what is, uh, that's a, that's who, a who's question. the core of the engineering? So uh, the founders came from NetSpeed. They were pretty young. Uh, it, when they started NetSpeed, it was a, a great experience for them to take a company, get it sold in. Uh, Intel bought the company, and most of the founders already spent enough time there on Xeons and the like, building very high-performance systems. We've got that, plus then complemented with te techni technical and business and product capabilities out of uh, star companies like Apple, Nuvia, Arm, uh, TI, and so on and so forth. So we've got uh, lots of people from lots of pe companies. We, we've grown to about 50 people over two years, and we are looking to expand. As I said, we just raised 37 million in funding. Um, it's a validation of our business plan and our uh, capability as a team, and we're looking to grow into the next generation. So somebody who's interested to work on accelerating the intelligent compute might be interested to work with you, right? Indeed, and so if you think about intelligent compute, all it says is it's no longer just a CPU or a GPU, it's a combination of really smart computation that needs to be pulled together to do AI and intelligent compute. And our job is to connect them all together in the most efficient way possible.